Let's now look at techniques for our different trig integrals, how we handle them. Well, we have our standard ones to start off with. Sine obviously goes to minus cos, cos goes sine, sec squared goes to tan. The tan one, once again, I remind you, it comes from sine over cos, so we get the log situation, log of sec, negative log of cos. What about if we have, let's just look at sine to the power of n. I'm just going to do sine because cos being the complementary ratio, it's the same technique that you would use. So let's just build sine. Sine to the power of 1, as I say, minus cos. Sine squared, we know we use our double angle result, so we change it to a half of 1 minus cos 2x, and we can integrate that. All right, let's now go a step further. How do we handle sine cubed? Well, we don't have an identity that involves sine cubed. Uh, so we now know with integration, it's either going to be a substitution. In other words, get it in the form, derivative times function, or we're going to have to use parts. So we have to split it up into two functions, one which we can integrate, one which we can differentiate. So for sine cubed, I'm going to split it this way sine x sine squared. Now the reason I do that is that sine squared I can now use an identity and make that 1 minus cos squared and I've now got it in the form derivative times function. So I can go ahead and do it. If you don't see it, do your actual substitution, u equals cos x, so du is minus sine x dx, and we finally get our answer. There it is, a third cos cubed minus cos x plus a constant. So whenever it's to an odd power, we can do this, because the odd power allows me to pull the sine x out leaving me with an even number. And if it's an even number, I can write it as sine squared to some power. The sine squared, I can always change to 1 minus cos squared, so I will end up with derivative times function. So that's the approach for any odd power. Pull sine x out, change your sine squared to 1 minus cos squared. Okay, what happens when it's to power 4, though? Because if I pull sine out, I can't do it because I'm left with sine cubed. How do I change sine cubed into the cos? Can't do it. So even power, we need a different approach. This time, I'm going to write it as sine squared squared. By doing that, I use my double angle results for sine squared, which allows me to reduce the power down, because straight away that squared becomes power of 1 of a trig function. So I get a quarter, 1 minus cos 2x squared, which I then can expand out and then I deal with each individual terms via whichever technique I need. Now the one of it is obviously easy, the cos is easy, the cos squared, I'm going to have to use the double angle again to get that one down. So the cos squared, I change to a half of 1 plus cos 4x. Okay, now I've got a whole heap of things that can be integrated. And there's our, our answer. Okay, so anytime you have an even power, we don't pull the sine x out. We leave it as sine squared to some power, change the sine squared, but this time use the double angle result. Then you expand that out and just deal with each one however, it, well, however is needed, because you're going to reduce that power because you've used the double angle result. You're changing the squared to the power of one of a, a trig function. So therefore, sine 5, it's an odd power, pull the sine out, I'm left with sine squared squared, change the sine squared to 1 minus cos squared, I can now do the substitution, and we get a, an answer. I think I didn't bother going sine to the power of 6, so it stopped there. Okay, but what if you have a combination of both sine to the power of something and cosine to the power of something? How do we handle that? Generally, it's going to be substitution rather than by parts. So that's pretty much the way we're going to do it. So cos to the power of 5x sine cubed. Well, I know that if I'm going to do it via substitution, then I need to pull out either sine x or cos x, because this will become my du. It's going to be something like that. So what will I do it on? I'm pulling the sine out. That means the other sine Okay, we talk about an odd power here, two odd powers. I get the 1 minus cos squared. See, I want to change it to all the same thing. So that sine x in this case, well, I can do the straight substitution. Because now I can do the substitution, and there it is. So, if both powers are odd, 
then you can choose either. I think the smart way of doing it is pull it out of the lower power. In other words, you will be the higher power. So you pull it out of the lower power because there'll be less of an expansion that you have to do. Because right, I ended up with just one minus cos squared to the power of one, nice and easy. Whereas if I pulled the cos out, I would have had cos to the power of four, which is cos squared squared. Change the cos squared to one minus sine squared, then I'm gonna have to expand that out. More work to do. So it's probably smarter to pull the du out of the lower power when you do it. If they're both odd, here's one where one's odd and one's even. Well, in that case, the choice is simple. You always pull it out of the odd one. So I'll pull the cos out of the odd one. That means the cos squared that I'm left with becomes one minus sine squared. I can do a substitution. And there's our final answer. So one odd, one even. It's the even one that's going to be the U. So in other words, you're pulling it out of the odd. You're getting your DU from the odd one. Two even ones, sine squared, cos squared. It doesn't matter. I just change one of them to the other. Because they're even powers, I can always pull out a one minus sine squared in this case, but if I'd chosen the other one, I could have made that a one minus cos squared. Expand out and then just deal with each one individually. I've now got a sine squared and a sine to the power of four. I am kind of cheating here because I've already worked out the answers to these. So I've just subbed them straight in rather than do them all again. But you would have to use the technique for sine squared, the technique we saw before for sine to the power of four. Both even either make the sine squared into 1 minus cos squared or the cos squared into 1 minus sine squared. Just make them all the same trick. Well, let's now look at the tan ratio. Again, the cotan would be exactly the same because it's the complementary. Tan. Well, tan to the power of 1, we now know, yep, that's going to be minus the log of cos or the log of sec, whichever you prefer. Tan squared. Yep, we can change tan squared to be sec squared minus 1 tan x minus x. Okay, that brings us to tan cubed. How do we now approach this one? I'm pulling out tan x. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm not pulling out the tan x. I'm actually pulling out the tan squared because the tan squared I can change to sec squared minus 1 and sec squared is the derivative of tan. So I'm trying to get the sec squared there. So I've got the du. So we pull out tan squared. I now have two integrals. The first one I can do via a substitution now because it's in the form derivative times function. And the second one tends to be a tan to a lower power. And I've already got the answer to that one there. So I'll do my substitution, sub back in. There it is, half tan squared plus the log of cos x. So tan to the power of 4, pull out the tan squared. So tan's a bit easier. We just do that every time. Just pull out the tan squared. Change it to sec squared minus 1, split it into two integrals. Straight away, your first integral is always going to be derivative times function. Your second one is going to be a tan function to a lower power, and you just deal with that one and whatever you have to do. Uh, let's do those. And we've already worked out tan squared, so I subbed that straight in. And, whoops, and we got our final answer there, a third tan cubed minus tan. This one's a little bit more interesting then. The uh, reciprocal ratios, now cotan, not a problem, do it the same as tan. What about sec and cosec? So I'll do sec, cosec's essentially the same, it's just the complementary. Sec, well that's how you do it, I'm not suggesting you do do it, I'm suggesting you remember it. But this is where it comes from. Because of course it's obvious what you would do. I'll multiply both top and bottom of the fraction by sec x plus tan x. It's obvious. What? Yeah, because look what happens. On the top of the fraction I have sec squared plus sec tan. On the bottom I have sec plus tan. But hang on, the derivative of sec is sec tan. And the derivative of tan is sec squared. I have derivative on function. That's the log of sec plus tan. There's one of those non-standard integrals to remember. Integrate sec, you get the log of sec plus tan. Get log of sec plus tan. Sec squared is a little bit easier because we know that's just tan. Sec cubed. 
Hmm, hang on, the derivative of sec is sec 10. How am I going to get that by factorizing? Well, really, there's only essentially one thing I can do here if I'm going to put it in the two functions. It's sec times sec squared. Can I get sec 10 out of that? Probably not. Well, remember I said essentially there's two methods. Substitution or by parts. This one we're doing by parts. So u is going to be sec, which makes du sec 10. You might be thinking, hang on, differentiate to make it easier. Is that easier? Well, yeah, because I want to integrate the other one. And sec squared to integrate just goes to tan. If I'd chosen sec to be the dv, when I integrate it, I'm going to get the log of sec plus tan. And then if you think about it, because we'd go v du, I'm then going to have to integrate the log of sec plus tan. Whoa, too much work. This is the better way of going. Make the u equal sec x. So we get uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, let's have a look at this integral of v du. Sec times tan squared. Oh, it'd be nice if that power was the other way around, wouldn't it? Because I'd have sec squared times tan, but not what I got. What could I do? Well, I'll change my tan squared to sec squared minus one. I can now rewrite this. Oh, I've ended up with sec cubed again. See, the integral of sec was okay. That went to log sec plus tan. But I'm back with the initial problem I had, integral of sec cubed. But it is a negative, which is nice because I can now look at this like an equation and move the sec cubed to the other side. And I have two lots of sec cubed. Well, divide both sides by two and eventually we have our answer. That's how we do sec cubed. Whenever you get an odd power on a sec, you got to do it by parts. So whenever you're doing your test, your assessment, you go, please be even, please be even, please be even, because the even ones are a lot easier, of course. Now that I've told you and you know I'm evil. <laughs> so sec to the power of four is an even power. A lot easier. Pull the sec squared out, make it one plus tan squared, and we can do our u equals tan x. So 1 plus u squared, there it is. So much quicker when they're even powers. So even powers, always pull the sec squared out and then change your sec squared to 1 plus tan squared. Simple substitution. Ah, 4g is all on our trig integrals.